In this video, we're going to be talking about Edifier Connect app, privacy statement, and configurations available for your headphones or earbuds. When you first open Edifier Connect app, this is the screen you're going to be presented with, as long as you haven't connected your earbuds or your headphones already to it. Now, what you can do here is select between the headphones and the speakers. You can choose the wireless series, for example, if that's the one you got. And then you can choose the exact model and start pairing with the instruction on how to get it done over your uh, Android or your iOS phone. Very straightforward, highly recommended. Now, there's a couple of sections here before we move to the configuration. We have Discovery. This is the Edifier shop. You can go through the headphones categories, speakers, gaming. Just simply explore what Edifier has to offer for their audience. Now, within a mail, you can subscribe to services, receive special promotions, just see what they're up to and whether there's anything that you can be useful um, to yourself if you want to follow the Edifier uh, uh, manufacturer with any news or events. And then lastly but not least, you have the Me section in a corner. You can simply open an account, look at the compatible devices that you can connect with your Edifier app, add some widgets, whether that's on the lock screen or on the home screen. They're quite useful when you have your um, lock screen um, uh, in initiated, you will see whether your headphones are connected, how much battery you have left, and so on. And within the home screen, you can control stop and stop, noise cancellation, and other features that are pretty useful. You, know, you don't want to be continuously going into the app to engage something, and, and that could be pre pretty useful. Uh, and then you have frequently asked questions and about section. Now I have successfully connected my Edifier X3 Lite earbuds. I have the cream color. The app is actually showing the, the gray ones, but that doesn't really matter as long as the version of the uh, earbuds is correct. Now, if you go into the top right corner in the settings, uh, you can see the, the, the MAC address, the firmware version, some of the reviews at the top right corner as well. You can look at the user manual, so how to use the, the earbuds, exactly how to charge them and so on. You have some control settings. Within the control settings, you can control both left and right earbud. You can choose what does the double tap, triple tap, uh, tap and hold do, and you can adjust those according to your needs. So it's pretty good for 30 pound headphones and associated app with it. I think you're getting quite a lot of flexibility here to make sure that the experience that you're getting is personalized. Now, if you go back and you look at your Find My Earbuds, if you press on Search, the earbuds do make a beeping noise. It's not terribly loud, but it's good enough to find your earbuds if you left them somewhere, uh, you know, in a, in a backpack or maybe at home. But you will need to um, maintain being quiet to hear them because, like I said, the beeping isn't terribly loud, so you won't be able to hear it from a, um, a, a next room. Now, then you have your uh, prompt volume. You can decide, um, you know, how you want to start the volume uh, on your on your earbuds straight on when you power them on, when you connect through the Bluetooth and so on. You have power off. You can switch them off automatically. Shut down timer for saving battery, Bluetooth settings, and then going back into the factory settings. So, like I said, that depending on the device you connected, you're getting a different range of settings that you can play with. But for the budget version and for the app itself, it's very convenient, very straightforward, and there's quite a lot to choose from. And one thing that I quite liked about it is no ads. So you don't have anything flashing at the top or bottom. If you swipe to the left, you can choose different uh, types of equalizing um, a sound. So you have classic, pop, um, and then you have rock and so on. And then if you swipe one more time, you have game mode on and off, and this is to reduce the latency. I quite liked it. I think the app is straightforward, loads well. I haven't seen it or experienced any crashes. Straightforward. I'm, I'm always know what I wanted to do and where to find the settings. And if I go into Edify and Connect app, so this is the page. You can you know find out more about it. But if you scroll all the way down to privacy policy, and I think this is something that everyone always should be looking at, what sort of data you're sharing, because you may be getting a product and you've paid for it, but you're also giving your data away. So if you move down to the privacy policy statements, you have information we collect and how we use the information we collect. First two bullet points. And then if you really want to deep dive into the information they're taking from you and whether you're worried about the data they, 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 they're gathering uh, from the device and using either for the, um, ex, uh, you know, for the improvement of the experience and so on, this is the section that you can look at. So I've gone through it. There is a contact information. 
when you get your headphones and when you open an uh, app, you don't have to be logging in, but you can create an account and then those contact information is gonna be collected. You know, it's voluntary, your email address, your username and so on. So these are the information they would need for you, uh, for them to create an account for you. Payment information, if you're using the shop on the discovery or the shop and you, you know, committing to buying something uh, through the app of their website, then the payment information will be collected. Again, another, um, another uh, piece of information that you would not expect um, not to be collected because it's a legitimate transactions. Now, photos and videos, I was a bit worried about it, but when, when I look at the account, you can change your picture, uh, profile picture, and then this would be the information that you can change. App itself does not have access to the uh, videos and photos, so it does not directly uh, have access to it, but if you voluntarily decide to share either uh, photos or videos, then those information will remain on the servers as well. Communications data for all sorts of communication, there is a technical support and so on, and then technical information, what device you're using, what software you're using, any crash data and so on. So I would say this, um, that the information that they collect and how they use them, use them, it's really good. It's for maintenance purposes, it's for improving the customer service, it's for improving the actual application, you know, and um, report on any uh, crashes and so on. And I think they're doing very good job. Yeah, so thank you very much everyone for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Like and subscribe if you can. And I'll see you in the next one.